Praise God. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you this morning. Amen. We're so grateful, amen, to have you with us on today. Amen. We do welcome you to the Ladder House Ministries where the glory is expected. Amen. Truly, we give God praise on this morning. We hope and pray that you all have had a happy Thanksgiving. Amen. We, we pray that <clears throat> um, by this time that um, our food has digested from the overeating that took place um, on this weekend. We, we praise God again for each and every one of you. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> again, we just thank you all for joining us, whether via Facebook or Zoom. We praise God for you on this morning. If, if you're watching, amen, via Facebook, we ask that you just please tag someone, that you please share this broadcast with some someone on this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Before we begin our um, service this morning, amen, we just want to give thanks to a couple individuals and their organizations. Amen. On last week, they were truly a blessing to this ministry, to where the ministry could be a blessing to others. And I just personally want to thank um, the men and women um, united. I want to thank Brother Randolph Keaton and Brother, um, I'm sorry, Elder Keith Graham, along with the Ellen Webb outreach team and those that are not a part of the outreach team, but chipped in to help us on last week. We just thank God for each and every one of you. Um, it's such a blessing to be able to see people smile. It's such a blessing to uh, see people rejoice and know uh, that, uh, that, that people do care for them. And, and it's such a blessing again, to be such a part of that. And I just want to thank each and every one of you. Amen for that. Amen. On this morning. Amen. Now that we're settled. Amen. Now that you probably have your breakfast sitting beside your, um, your chair at home. Amen. Let's time as it's time for us now to begin worshiping the Lord. It's time for us to give praise to God. It's time. Amen. For us to hear. Amen. What thus saith the Lord on today. Amen. So if you will just give God praise on this morning. Amen. I want you to act like, amen, that you're appreciative of what God is doing in your life. I want somebody, amen, to praise God and let God know, amen, how much you love him. Let God know that without him, you could not do anything. Amen. I want to let you know, if you can't praise God, amen, for yourself, amen, I want to let you know there's two testimonies that I know of in this ministry. I'm not going to name names or give details, but this is just stuff that I know for a fact. I know for a fact, amen, on last week, amen, that God healed someone. Glory to God. I know that God brought somebody out of something, amen, glory to God, amen, that was causing them maybe to feel uncomfortable, that was that was trying to make them feel sick. I know God brought them out of something, amen, that the devil had planned for them, amen, but the devil lost again. I know for a fact there's somebody in this ministry, glory to God, that's a member of the Ladder House Ministries family, amen, that can testify a debt cancellation. I'm not what oh, y'all missed. I'm not saying I didn't say debt payoff. I said debt cancellation. Amen. We are to give God praise. Amen. On this morning, we thank God for he still is a miracle worker. He still showed on last week that he's still a healer. Amen. He still showed that he's a provider. He God showed that he's sorry. He showed, amen, that he's still in control. Amen. Glory to God. If somebody ought to be praising God on this morning. Amen. If you can, you should be doing somersaults, backflips, however you want to do it. Amen. But we do thank God on this morning. We give him praise, glory, and honor. Amen. I'm learning to praise God in the small things. Amen. Glory to God, because I understand that we're waiting for the big things. Sometimes we miss God, but if we can praise God for the small things, I know that I'll never miss him. Amen. I'm praising God on this morning. Amen. Because there was a lunatic on the highway yesterday. Amen. Driving down the interstate door. I can't say how fast we were going, but anyway, there was a lunatic on the highway yesterday. Amen. They could not find themselves in their own lane. Amen. But they tried to come over into our lane. Amen. But I thank God for the protection. I thank God, amen, for putting something in between us and them. Amen. Where they couldn't touch it. I'm, I'm learning how to praise God. Amen. For the small things. Amen. I'm learning how to praise him for who he is. Amen. On this morning, right now, we're giving you space and we're giving you time. Amen. To give God praise. Amen. I know your million dollars hasn't come yet. I know your seven series BMW has not arrived yet. Amen. But you still can 
praise God right now. I know you still may be able to see the effects of the storm. I know you still hear the enemy talking to you. I know it still feels like you're not going to come out of that thing. Amen. But you ought to give God praise right now. Amen. The enemy told God, say, God, if you let me put this on them, if you allow them to go through this, Lord, I guarantee they'll stop praising you. Can you make the devil out of a liar this morning? Amen. And give God praise. Can we give God praise for our brothers and our sisters? Amen. That's going through on this morning. Our brothers and our sisters that are in a weary place on this morning and they're just struggling, glory, to get to God, to just get to the face of God on this morning. Amen. Can we praise God for them on this morning? Amen. It's a strong that bear the infirmity of the weak. Amen. We ought to give God praise. Amen. Glory to God on this morning because even though our calendar said Thanksgiving on Thursday, there are a lot of people that feel like they don't have a lot to give, that, that they have a lot to be thankful for. There's some people that were in mourning on Thursday. Some people are dealing with bereavement. Amen. But the saints, oh my God, my God, we ought to be giving God a praise on this morning. Amen. To help them through, to encourage them. So the power of God will fall. Oh my God, my God. Lord God, we just thank you on this morning. Oh God, we give you praise. Oh, we glorify you, God. Oh, God, we don't always get it right, God. Oh, Father, but you're always there. Lord, you keep your promises, God. Oh, God, even when we're not deserving, God. Lord, God, you still show us your grace, God. You still show us favor, God. And, Father, we just thank you. We give you praise. Oh, glory to God. I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Before we go any further on this morning, this song, I don't know, it was just in my head this morning. I don't even think I heard, listened to the whole song. But this morning, amen, as I was studying, amen, this song just, just, just fell in my, in my, in my, you know how you hear songs sometimes and, and it seems like they just keep playing in your head. You can't get them songs out of your head. Amen. It's one of those songs this morning I could not get out of my head. And I started listening to it. I was like, oh, my God. It's not a song that's going to make you shout, jump, run, or nothing like that. Well, maybe. I don't know. But it's so intimate. And it came to me on this morning, you know, sometimes when you want to get in intimate, Pastor, you know, it's not always the fast songs. <laughs> Come on, grown folks. Amen. Sometimes it's the slow songs. The songs where we can hear the words, the songs, amen, where the words permeate in our hearts. Glory to God. And we want to play this for you on this morning. Amen. If you will, just spend time with God for these few minutes as this song plays. Amen. And just think on the words of this song on this morning. Oh, God, we just praise you. How many people just want God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Lord, we just want you, God. We want your presence, God. I don't want a form of godliness. Mm. Hallelujah. I want God. I just want you, God. All I ever wanted was God. We're not here out of pretense, God. We just want you on this morning. And I don't want to give him second mm. best. God, forgive me for giving you second best. I want God. Oh, God, we want you on this All morning. All I ever wanted was God. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Oh, we just want you. I want God. I want God. Oh, fresh All I ever I want to live like him, treat everybody right. What do we do? Treat everybody. I want to look like him, precious in his sight. We created in his image. Help me to love, love. Lord, help us love like you. Even my enemies. Oh, Lord, help me. I want God. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Precious in your sight, Lord. Testify that I want God. Hallelujah. I decree that I want God. I scream, I want God. Oh, I want God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We're talking about the great I am, the creator. We want you, God. Hallelujah. Alpha and Omega. We want you, God. Lord, we need your presence. Don't take we want your, your presence spirit. From me. Don't take your don't presence take from us, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, keep your hands upon us, God. We want you, God. Hallelujah. Won't you, God? Hallelujah. Somebody just say, I want God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just let God know how much you want him on this morning. Oh, God, we're seeking you, God. God, we thank you on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, my God, I thank you. Oh, Father, we praise you. Lord, we magnify you, God. Lord, we exalt you on this morning. Oh, God, we decree and we declare, God. We shout, God, to everybody that can hear us on this morning. And we say that we want God. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Redeemer, our refuge and our fortress. Amen. Our Father, our healer, our deliverer. We want you on this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, fall fresh in this place on this morning, God. Lord God, on this morning, God, somebody needs you, God. Lord God, somebody's been crying out to you, God. Oh, God, we just pray, God, that you will manifest your presence 
on this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we pray that you will pour out fresh oil, God, upon your people on this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we ask you, God, oh God, to speak on this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus. Somebody, God, needs to be reminded, God, oh God, that you're still on the throne, Lord. Somebody needs to be reminded, God, that you are the great I am. Somebody needs to be reminded, God, that you have not, you have not forgotten about them, God. Somebody needs to be reminded on this morning, God, that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think, God. Somebody, God, needs you on this morning, God. Oh, God, we know, God, oh, glory to God, that you won't fail us, God. We know, God, oh, glory to God, Holly, that we know, God, that we that you have the best in your heart for us, God. Lord God, we know, God, that we are the apple of your eye, God. Lord, we know, God, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Lord God, we know, God, that we created in your image and your likeness, God. Oh, God, we just thank you on this morning. We give you praise. We glorify you, God. And Lord God, as I stand here, God, Lord God, Brian decreases, Lord. And Lord, I pray you increase, Father. Lord God, I don't offer you no resistance on this morning, God. But Father, I pray, God, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that I be in complete harmony, God, with your Holy Ghost on this morning, God. Lord, I pray, God, that I'm on the right dial, God, with the frequency of heaven on this morning, God, because somebody needs to hear what you're saying, God. They're not here to see me, God. They're not here to hear me speak, God. But Lord, they're here to hear what you have to say, God. And Lord God, we pray to send your word, God. For what your Lord, your word says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Oh God, send a proceeding word on this morning, God. Oh God, feed your sheep on this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, let your fire fall, God, in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs, God, an encouraging word, God, where they can get running in their feet, God. Somebody needs a word, God, where they will be encouraged on this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs a word, God, to be delivered, God, from the strongholds in their lives, God. Oh, God, we ask you, God, to send a word, God, to set the captive free, God. Send a word, God, that will align your believers with you, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, send a word, God, that will shake Satan's kingdom, God, in the name of Jesus. Send a word, God, in the name of Jesus, that will release your power in the earth, God. Oh, we just thank you, God. Oh, we give you praise, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, glory to God. Oh, God, we thank you, God. Oh, God, I thank you, God. Oh, keep clapping those hands on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep clapping them hands. Hallelujah. Until you create a spark. Oh, glory to God. Until that spark turns into an inferno. Oh, my God, my God. I know you may not feel like it, but just keep praising him. Something is about to happen. You just keep praising Praising him. Don't try to figure out how. Don't try to think about how God is going to do it. Don't try to tell God, well, God, this is going on, God. So I know you can't do that. The devil is a lie. You keep praising him like you already got it. You keep praising him. Oh, my God, my God. God, I thank you on this morning. Oh, God, you're worthy. Oh, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. We praise you, Lord. We give honor, glory to God, to each and every one of you here on today. Amen. Again, we welcome you to the latter house ministries where the glory, amen, is expected. Mm, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, just saturate this place, God. Lord, where your spirit is, God, there is liberty. Oh, we decree and declare. We receive freedom on this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor you all on this morning. Glory to God. To my brother, to my friend, Pastor Moore, God bless you. Amen on this morning. Amen.
Amen to my cousin. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen to, to my cousin, to my neighbor. Amen. Deacon Shaw, we got God bless you. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Amen on this morning and to each and every one of you. Amen. You all are home. Amen. But we thank God for you being here. Amen on this morning. It would have been very easy to stay in the bed on this morning. Mm, I know. I know. It would have been very easy to tell God, no, let's try this again next week. It would have been easy. But we praise God. I know some of you say, oh, I'm pressing my way. You know how the saints just say, I'm pressing my way. I thank God for you pressing your way. Amen on this morning. Amen. On last week, we began our series on a body. Excuse me, on a body. And we want to continue with that here on this week. Glory to God. This chair is going to be fine. Glory to God. On this morning, we want to go to a text which is probably familiar to a lot of you all. We're going to be going to the 91st Psalm. And I'll be reading just two verses for your hearing. Amen on this morning. I got to space them out. <clears throat> um, Psalm 91. Amen. I'll give you a minute to find it. Amen. Some of us with the things that have been going on for the last, I don't know, 20 months or so, we probably have this particular text pen in our Bible. We probably know how we fold the pages in certain parts of our Bible so we can easily get to. We have that little bookmarker there in our Bible. Some of us may have that one marked. Amen. Well, we're going to Psalm 91, and I will just be reading the first two verses. Amen. In this book. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Psalm 91. Psalm 91, it reads, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is, somebody ought to say he is, my refuge and my fortress, my God. You ought to claim him, amen, for yourself right now. Say, my God. In him will I trust. Amen. As we continue talking from our series on abiding, we want to talk today about the secret place. The secret place. On last week's, we talked about abiding. We talked about abiding as it is in relationship to the vine and the branches. We talked about uh, abiding from the relationship between the vine and the branches and bringing forth fruit. So as we continue with this series, we will look at abiding from the perspective of Psalm 91. Some have referred to this particular psalm as a psalm of protection. But as we go through this text, we will see that, yes, the psalm speaks of protection, but it also goes deeper than that. Mm. The protection is conditional. Just as the fruit in John 15 is conditional, so is this protection that we see about in this particular psalm. In this text, the protection is a product of abiding with the protector. Mm. Watch this. We have to be careful that we're not just seeking the resource. In other words, we have to be careful that we're not just seeking the stuff and we're overlooking the source. In other words, there's no relationship if we just want God and what God can give us, I'm sorry, there's no relationship. We just want what God can give us and what God can do for us. 
But abiding speaks to relationship. Abiding speaks to staying with and dwelling with God. Uh -huh. Abiding uh -huh, uh, speaks to the, as the song said just then, abiding speaks to the fact that I want God. Abiding says, my priority is seeking God for who he is with the knowing of who he is will bring about what we need. So in other words, amen, my seeking of God is not predicated on getting stuff from God. It's not predicated on God's hand. Amen, my seeking God is because I want him. Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I'm seeing there's something here about the word of God. A lot of times whenever the Lord promises something, amen, he, his promises are not based on us sitting back and reclining and waiting on them, amen, but the promises are conditional. Watch this. How can we expect God or to get something from God without having God? God. Amen. Because if we think and act that way, amen, we're being religious. Oh my God. What we're doing, we're operating in a form of godliness. We believe what we're this. We're treating God as he's the genie and we're just rubbing him. Amen. Whatever we need something. We're treating God, amen, as he's a fortune teller or a palm reader. Oh, I hope not. Amen. Amen. That we get folk may go to sometime and say, can you just tell me about my future? No, no, no. God is much bigger than that. Amen. He, oh my God, we got to first understand who he is. Amen. God is bigger than the stuff. And because he's bigger than the stuff, those that know God know that if I have God, the stuff is nothing for him to give me. Oh, my God. See, we, 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 we limit God, amen, because the stuff, amen, that we seek, amen, when we're seeking it outside of God, amen, what we're doing, we're idolizing the stuff and not God. And we're saying the stuff is bigger than God. If the stuff, oh my God, if, if the stuff, amen, was bigger than God, amen, why would we even call on to him? Won't you just worship the stuff? But because God is who he is, the stuff is light work for him. But I, I believe now, probably more than ever, God is calling for his people to abide. We talked about it last week. Every folk, folk talking about getting back to normal. I, Get it, get, get it. Folk, watch this. What, what some folk really are saying is, I want to get it back to the place where I can go back to the bar again. I want to get it back. Amen. 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 I want to get it back. Amen. To the place to where I can go downtown and be amongst the people. Amen. I want, I want to get it back to the place where I can do. Amen. What I, what I want to do. Amen. But, but, but we learned something on last year. We should have learned something on last year. Even though things were uncomfortable. Amen. God made it so to where we could abide. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Hey, watch this. Watch this. There were, there were really no church services where we can come into the building. Amen. That sometimes we put above God. Amen. We 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 could not come. Amen. Where folk. Amen. Could pat us on the back. Amen. And give us titles and, and, and give us positions and things of that nature. Amen. We were at home. Amen. We were at a place where we could abide with God. A place where we can get to the face of God. But no, no, no. That's not good enough. I want to be able to go where I want to go. Oh, my God, my God. I want to be able to get out and do what I want to do. I want to hang around who I can hang around with. Amen. To be told, last year, we were cut off from hanging around things we should have never been around in the first place. My wife will tell me to stop saying this after a while because I say it so much. Connection creates flow. And we were connected to things which, which caused a flow into us that God never designed for us. 
and we're looking for God to do whatever we outside of what he told us to do. We, we're waiting for God to do this, that, and the other thing. Amen. But we don't know what his will is because we don't spend no time with him. I believe God wants his people to be happy. I believe God wants his people to be, be, be uh, uh, joyful and things of that nature. But watch this. God is also a jealous God. <laughs> One of the first things he told the children of Israel when he brought them out of Egypt, thou shall have no other gods before me. Nothing in your life should be above me or bigger than me. We should never seek anything more than we seek God. As we look at our text, yes, our text does speak about protection, but if all we look looking at and see is that, we miss something much greater. If all we see in the text is what God can do for us, if our eyes are only fixed on those things that God can do, we'll miss him. Watch this. And keeping it with the text, we'll, meet, we'll miss the secret place. Watch this. The secret place is not so much a physical place, but the secret place speaks to God as being our dwelling place or our habitation. If we're only looking at God when we want, when we want handouts, if we only look for God and call upon God when we're in trouble, what we are saying is that we are satisfied with him visiting us from time to time. Uh, that's not a mindset of the abider. That's not a mindset of, of the believer. That should not be the mindset of the believer. Watch this. That mindset, amen, of visiting this God from time to time can cause us to miss the secret place. See, we thought Psalm 91 was just about what God was saying he would do for us. Amen. As far as the protection. Amen. But as Pastor Webb used to say, we got to get under the umbrella first. <laughs> and getting under the umbrella is dwelling with the one that's holding the covering. Oh my God. Oh my God, see, see, we, 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 got, we got comfortable, amen, with church, with people playing our favorite song, playing our favorite tune, amen, and running and jumping and praising God, I'm not knocking and praising God, all that thing, all those things are good if that's how you praise God, amen, but God wants intimacy. My God, my God, help me, Holy Spirit. Watch this, the Bible says, says he that dwelleth it's not discounting women it's talking to to us as creation he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty he that dwelleth where in the secret place what is the secret place it's the place of the most high amen the most high hebrew is elion in other words amen glory to god it speaks to the highest so so the secret place belongs to the one that dwells there it is the one that dwells in the secret place that receives what the one that's in the secret place can provide. Dwelling and abiding can be uh, uh, interchangeable. Those two words, they are interchangeable. Amen. But here, dwelling in this text speaks to sitting. It speaks to sitting down. It speaks to setting ourselves. It, it, it means to put ourselves in a particular place. Amen. This particular place is a secret place. Why is it called a secret place? Because everybody can't find it. And watch this. Watch this. It's not that God is hiding it from us. 
but it's only available to those that abide. Oh my God. It's not available for those that treat God like he's a Santa Claus. It's not available for those that treat God like he's some kind of genie that pops out of the bottle. It's not for, no, no, no. The secret place is for the abider. The secret place is one, amen, that wants God. Oh God, I'm just here for you, God. But while I'm here, God, whatever you want to do, you can do it. But I'm here for you, God. My God, my God, Brian, what is the secret place? The secret place is a place of covering. The secret place is a shelter. Watch this, the secret place is a hiding place. Oh, my God, David himself said in, 20, in Psalm 27, 5, oh, my God, he says, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Oh, in the secret place of his tabernacle, shall he hide me, he shall set me upon a rock. What David here is saying is, God's going to hide me in his covert. What is a covert? He's going to hide me in a concealed place. He's going to hide me in a sheltered place. This sheltered place is a secret place. What's, what, 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 what secret place is this? David calls it the tabernacle. Yeah, don't miss this here. What's a tabernacle? The tabernacle is God's home. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Watch this. So while you're here, David, I know your enemies are chasing you. I know your son Absalom wants to take you out. But, David, while you're here in my presence, that cannot come here. Oh, my God. While you're here in my presence, David, oh, my, I can love on you, David. I can cover you with my feathers, David. I can talk to you, David. I can assure you, David, that I'm still God's nothing too hard for me. Mm. Tabernacle is a secret place. It's God's home. Oh, what are you saying, bro? Have you ever been to somebody's house? A loved one, when you go in, they say, make yourself at home. God, what, what, what we're missing is when we, when we miss the abiding, we miss God saying, make, we miss God saying to us, oh my God, my God, oh, just come in and make this your home. We're missing, we're missing God saying, just kick up your feet for a few minutes. We're missing God saying, let me talk to you for a little bit. We miss God saying, uh -huh, you haven't been here in a while, have you? You've been caught up in all that stuff for a long time, uh, but you're here with daddy right now now. Let's talk for a little bit. Let me show you who I am in relation to what you're going through. Because you've been dwelling and circling in what you've been going through far too long. Uh, but you're here with me now. Let me remind you that this is home. We don't have to die to experience heaven. Number two, the secret place. Well, says it's not just a random place that we pick. The secret place, again, is a place to where God calls home, but he allows us to reside. Oh, my goodness. See, it's one thing to go to somebody's house and they say, make yourself at home. And it's another thing to go to the house and bring your bags. It's another thing to come say, this is what I got. I'm bringing all that I have with me. Can I stay here for a little while? Can I just reside with you for a while? Oh, my. Even when I go back to my home, I still want you to be with me. So let me reside with you for a little while. The secret place isn't, isn't a place that we run to occasionally. It's a place we, that we should habitually reside in. The Bible says, he that dwelleth. It doesn't say he that visited. See, we have service. Oh my goodness, I'm about to get in trouble. We have services, and we treat services like a visitation. And services have become so, so commonplace that we miss the body. We miss the presence. Some places I've seen, they have pro, I only have to look at the programs. Because the program is scripted on how man wants it. Uh -huh, the program, would it be scripted this way? It's, it's almost like saying, God, 
We're going to do it our way on today. You watch this. You can come visit us if you want to. I don't know about you, but I'm past a place of visitation. Uh, the visitation may seem to be okay because he's still visiting. Amen. But I need God every day. I need God all the time. I need God in every situation, whether it's good or bad. I want to dwell. What's this? The secret place because, what's this? Because it's God's tabernacle, because it's God's home. Uh huh. It, it makes it the holy place of the most, or, or the holy of holies. What are you talking about, Brian? Back in the Old Testament, the people could go into the holy place of the tabernacle, but only the priest could go into the most holy place. Not only that, he could, the priest could only go into the most holy place or the holy of holies once per year oh somebody somebody ought to thank god for jesus right now oh jesus we thank you why are you saying that brian because jesus made a way that we can enter into the secret place ourselves he made a way that we are not limited to entering in on an annual basis but we can now dwell there Jesus made a way to where I don't have to wait for somebody with a title. Some, oh my God, somebody that's dressing the part. Somebody's looking the part. But now Jesus is our great high priest. According to Hebrews 4, 14, it says, see, and then we have a great high priest that is passing to the heavens. Jesus, the son of God. Oh my God, for we are not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was at all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Then it says, let us, oh my God, let us therefore come. Uh, in other words, because of Jesus, we now have a privilege. We don't have to wait for the day of atonement. We don't have to wait for the priest to go in for us. I don't have to find the one that you think is so holy, saved and sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost, to go before God for me. Jesus died on the cross. He shed his blood and has given us access to the Father. And he said, come on in here, come boldly. Come with confidence unto the throne of grace. The secret place, although this place is secret, it's available for us. Oh, Jesus again gave us access. We don't have to be left out. We don't have to be uncovered. Oh, my God. He wants us to abide with him and him with us. He that dwelleth in the secret place. I like this. He that dwelleth in the secret place shall abide. Now, even though a lot of times abide and dwell are interchangeable, now here the word abide means lie. In other words, it means to have a habitation. In other words, it's a place we should spend so much time in that we should start getting mailed. Because you know what they say, you have to be careful about letting folks send their mail to your house because it keeps coming continuously. After a while, they can claim it as they domicile. <laughs> But the Lord is saying, abide, come lodge here. Come fix yourself here. I want you, I want, I want this place, I want you to, 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 to look at this residence as your shelter or your dwelling. But why is this? Because he says, watch it. He says abide under the shadow. Watch this. This is not a shadow of anybody. This is not anybody's covering or shelter. Or shelter. This is the shadow of the almighty. Do we really, oh my God. Do, do we really, do we really know who God is? Have we churched God so much that we forgot who he is? Have we been churched so much that we, that we cannot receive God outside of having church? Because, why, oh my God, I don't, I don't know about, no, I can't speak for nobody else, but Brian, I don't know about you, but once a day is not enough for me. <laughs> my mind needs to be renewed every day. My tongue has to be dealt with every day. Y'all know, I know folks don't want to admit it. I, I, I tell the truth. Right, right, right. 
So my flesh, my flesh sometimes had to be told, no, you can't do that. You need to listen to what the Lord, listen to what the spirit is saying to you. So, so I, I, I can't wait, amen, for once a day, amen, to abide with God. I can't wait, amen, to come in, into the presence of somebody else hoping they got what I need. Amen. I'm abiding every day, every day, every day. Abiding to be an all day thing. You know why? Because it's the place of the almighty. Amen. I believe, amen, when we really understand who God is. Is and know where he's inviting us to, he won't be able to keep us out. I'm going to say because I think everybody here loves eating. You ever found a restaurant you really love and it blew your mind the first time you went there? They can't keep you out. They know you by name. Watch this, so much so, you don't even need the menu anymore. You know exactly what you want to order. That's how it should be with us in abiding with God and dwelling with God. Oh, because I know that I have something so great there. I know the awesomeness of God. Watch this. The one that we're abiding with is the creator. He's the one that spoke those things that be not as though they were. In other words, even when they don't exist, God can say, let it be and it shall be. Don't miss that there. Because in the abiding place, we can go into, into the abiding place as we are going through what we're going through. And when God speaks, what we're going through can be our past and what he says can be our now. That's the power of the one we're abiding in. Oh, I'm getting off script. I'm sorry. We're talking about protection here. He that abideth under the shadow of the almighty. This is what's powerful. <laughs> a shadow speaks to a shade or protection. Like Psalm 121 says, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade. It speaks again to him being our protector. Watch this. But I was like, what is a shadow? I had to look, I had to see. I know what a shadow is, but I, don't want, I want to get more information. A shadow is a reflected image, right? So a shadow speaks to being near or close to something or someone. We cannot experience the shadow of the almighty without dwelling in his presence. We cannot even experience his shadow without the abiding. But watch this. A shadow is also an image cast by a body intercepting light. Typically, for someone to see my shadow, I need the help of light so they can see my shadow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But, but two of the things needed for the shadow, which is an image and light, is all in the presence of the abiding. Oh, my God. Because the secret place is God's home, and because in his home is his presence, and because we know that his presence is light, amen, they cast off a shadow whenever we get into his presence. So, oh, my God. So, in other words, when we're in the face of God, we're not limited. Watch this. His presence is not limited to that one space. God's too big for that because he's light and his light is so big his image is so big that when we abide with him we're under his shadow you can't see it amen why because it's in a secret place watch this God's light is so powerful Revelation 21 23 says oh my God the city had no need of sun Neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. God is saying through his word in the abiding, the abiding is my presence surrounding you. My God. There's so much mess that we're in or that we're surrounded by. And we're constantly wondering why we are there and why we cannot step out of it. 
we're constantly wondering, why is it that I keep going around this same mountain? We wonder why everything around us constantly look the same because we're missing the abiding. Oh, Lord. So we're in the same text here, same verse. So the text says the shadow is that of the Almighty himself. And here that word speaks to Shaddai. That in other words, it means he's the most powerful. Oh my God. It's so amazing how the psalmist used uh, uh, these powerful words to describe God in the first two verses because he understands that he knows that what he's experiencing can only come from God. That what he's experiencing can only come from the mighty one. That what he's experiencing can only come from the holy one. That what he's experiencing can only come from the secret place. That what he's experiencing can only come from the abiding. He says his words so people won't mistaken. God for nobody else. We see it, we talk about it over and over again. We pray, even we even put it in our prayers. God, there's nobody like you. You're God all by yourself. But the psalmist is not, I believe, not only reminding us, but I believe he's reminding himself who God is. Why can you say that, Brian? Because if you read the most intimate of Psalms, that are written by David, Moses, whoever wrote them, you will find that they wrote these psalms in going through something. They wrote these psalms when they were experiencing trouble. They wrote them when they were going through a storm. They wrote them through intimate times with God. Watch this. Right in the midst of trouble. They wrote them even while trouble was around them, but at the same time experiencing God's grace and his glory. They wrote them while they were experiencing all hell breaking loose in their lives, but at the same time seeing that God was big than the hill. Ooh. Moving in the text, it says, I will say the Lord, he is. Mm -hmm. The word Lord in Hebrew is Jehovah. It means the existing one. Watch this. Between verse one and verse two, it's like it's almost changed the, the, the not so much a narrative, amen, but the voice of the, or the tune of the writer. Some people attune or give credit to this text or to Psalm 91 to Moses. But then there's some others that give it to David and, and they, they actually say, some actually say more than likely it was David um, that wrote this particular psalm. But however, it's still God's word. Watch this. However, watch this. There's a change in the tune from verse 1 and verse 2. Verse 2 says, I will say. Uh, watch this first in verse one he tells us watch this he, he he's pointing more to a directive he's pointing amen to to a command he's pointing amen and letting us know amen where we should be and he tells us he that dwells here so but now in verse two he says let me give my testimony oh my god my god he says i will say uh -huh, i will say that he is my lord uh, in other words i i He's saying, I've experienced him because I've been dwelling and abiding with him in the secret place. I know that he is. I know that he's the most high. I know that he's almighty. I know that he is the Lord. You know why? Because I've been abiding. Then in verse two, he's not writing about anything somebody told him. He's writing about his experiences with God. He's writing about that knowledge of God. He's writing from the place of relationship with God. And in the midst of his writing about that, he said, I will say that the Lord is. And he goes on to say, you know, so I found out that being in the presence of God, I found out he's my refuge and my fortress. Uh-huh, why well, this in Psalm, in verse one, the psalmist tells us about the secret place. He tells us ab about abiding and dwelling. He tells us about the protect and the protection. But in this verse, he's letting us know, I'm not speaking about this anything. I'm not speaking about something that was written in the newspaper. I'm not speaking about nothing I read on social media. I'm speaking about unexperience. I'm speaking about a relationship with the Father. I'm telling you who God is. Oh, 
oh my God, oh my God. He says, therefore, he is my refuge. He's my shelter from the storm. He's my shelter from danger. As a matter of fact, that's why I think it was David. As we go back to Psalm 46, the psalmist says, God is our refuge and our strength of every present help and trouble. Oh my God. Why well, since though when I read that, uh-huh, I saw him about him being present in trouble. See, sometimes when we're going through challenges and difficulties, it seems like God is not present. I say, I say, Brian, how can you say that being a believer? How can you say that having faith? How can you say that being the pastor? I can say it because I'm human. I can say it because it's life. Everybody's been through something from time to time and wonder where God is at. God, where are you showing up at? But the Bible says he's a present help. Oh, my God. He's present not only because he said he will never leave us nor forsake us, but he's present because you know why? The psalmist was a body. My God. Oh, we can testify. We can have a knowing that he's there. Amen. Because we've been with him. We can have a knowing that he's there because we took over his home. Oh, my God. My God. When was the last time you just busted up in God's house? When was the last time you just busted up in the Holy of Holies? When was the last time you just busted up before the throne of God? Nobody had to hold us back from busting up on Thursday in somebody's kitchen. Who was the last time we busted up in God's house? Understand that he's our father. We're his children. In that, think about the reception. Oh, my goodness. I guess that most parents would have when their children came by the house. When they can't watch this, to spend time with them, to dwell with them. Watch this. Not only does the psalmist say he's my refuge, he also says he's my fortress. Oh my goodness. Not only does he cover, but he's also my stronghold. In other words, he's my fortified place. Uh, because, because, because he's that place of refuge and fortress, we can take assurance that it is a place that is strong against attack. Has anybody ever been under attack before? If you have, we got to find ourselves in the abiding place. We got to find ourselves in the secret place. Uh -huh, you know why? Because it's in that place where we find refuge, where we find covering. But it's also that place, oh my God, that is our fortress for us. It's a place where we can run into and don't have to worry about what's running behind us. You know why? Because it's God's home. I can tell you this right here. Your devil, oh my God, the devil and your enemies can't go to God's house. <laughs> He's my fortress, lets us know. That he's a place that helps us withstand the strains and the wearing. Anybody ever feel worn down? He, he's that place where we will be worn down to work from the effects of the warfare, from the effects of the battles. He, he said, I'm that place for you to come and just sit right here with me. Take your seat and dwell right here with me. Watch this. You ain't got to say nothing. Ooh. Just enjoy my presence. Enjoy my holiness. Oh, my God. Enjoy the light. Oh my God. Enjoy the sound of the many waters. Oh, my God. Enjoy my home. Watch this. As the text continues, the psalmist says, my God. First, he says, I will say of the Lord, he is. But now he says, my God. You ever took possession of something before? And say, this is my, you remember growing up as a child? You play with your favorite toy? And somebody take it out of your hand? You said, it's mine. When are we going to possess God? My God. We say my church. 
We say my pastor. We say my car. We say my house. Why? We say my money. We stay clean on everything except God. And in thinking about it and looking at the voice from the psalmist, the psalmist says, my God, because he's been abiding, he's been dwelling. It's a place that he's, oh, he, watch this, it's a place that he's always around. He's seen God in action. He's seen God do things in his life. He's seen God protected from things that he can protect himself from. He's seen God protected from things that he could even see. So in the midst of their body, he says, my God. In other words, he said, I know I, I know him personally. I don't know him as a religion. I know him personally. I, I, I know him personally, not as a form of godliness, but I know him personally. I know him as my refuge and my fortress. I know him as, as first as my God. I know him as Alpha and Omega. I know him as refuge and fortress. Watch this. I know him as God. He's all over the place. You know why? Because he knows him as what he's speaking. I know him as my God because I've been abiding in him and he in me. I know him for who he is because I've been dwelling in the secret place. I've been living in his house. The psalmist says he is my God. I know he's my God. I know he's a supreme God. Why well, says then he says, in him will I trust. I'm about to get in trouble. I know it. I know I'm about to get in trouble. Because trust is a big word. It's simple to trust when things are going well. But when trouble shows up, it, let's be real, people. So church, church folk don't like to be real. Let's be real. When trouble shows up sometimes, it challenges trust. I know trusting sometimes is difficult to do because we've been disappointed so much, because we've been let down so many times. Watch this, and it's hard to trust who we don't see it. Because ever since we've been able to hear and articulate words, we've always heard, even in our own homes, I'll believe it when I see it. And it's ingrained in us. But then I found that statement is not really off. What's off is the abiding. Because we, we can believe it when we see it, but don't expect to see it outside the abiding. Watch this. Because there's some things, amen, that's, be, that's, that's beyond what we can see or think right now. There's some things that go beyond what we really can trust in right now. You know why? Because what we see is the problem. We see the storms. We see the issues. We see what we're going through. That's what we see. And as we're constantly looking and seeing those things, that's what we believe. But then I kept reading. I was like, wow, trust, a lot of times, is something that we do. <laughs> and in doing, watch this, whatever we do, it's either going to be easy or hard. Some things we do is difficult, but sometimes we do them. Trust, doing trust is difficult. Watch this, hold on, I'm going somewhere with this. But in this text, trust isn't something that we do. It's a place that we abide. It's a place we dwell. Brian, you got to give me some scripture on that. The psalmist says, in him will I trust. He didn't say anything about him, him trying to muster up Holy Ghost and fire him and say, I, I trust you, God. Even the midst, even, Lord, I even in the midst of me seeing all this, God, I'm still going to trust you, God. You know how we do. We get in God, I'm still going to trust you. We just keep saying it until we, we, we just, it's, until we get to a place where God is hearing that we're trusting him so much, he's going to automatically do it. But the psalmist says, 
in him will I trust. In is a preposition. It's not something that's done. Watch this. What's a, a preposition? Going back to grammar school, we say a preposition is a word or class of words that express relationship or position. Remember, going back early to dwell. Dwelling means to sit, it means to take a seat, right? So now the psalmist says, In him will I trust. Watch this. The trust, this trust in. This particular trust in is developed in the abiding, it's developed in this secret place. In the abiding, our knowing of him helps to minister the voice of doubt where we've been residing, oh, glory to God, where we've been residing the whole time of our going through. But it's in the abiding, in the place of the knowing that we realize the trust is not something, the trust is what we put in him. You know why? Because I'm, in it. oh my God, the abide in the abiding, in the dwelling, what we have done, we have stepped out of ourselves and stepped in him. Oh my God, our trust is not in the things that's going on around us. Our trust or lack thereof is not what's going on to us. Amen. But trust is about what we are in. See, we, we, for so long we've been told and, and, and taught how to do. Watch this. Not only that, so much in the church, we've always been told, you got to forgive. You got to trust. You got to have faith. Will somebody show me how? Show me how. Show me how to trust when I'm in a dark place. Show me how to trust whenever I want to give up. Show me how to trust when the more I press, the more is pressed against me. Show me how to trust whenever I'm on my knees praying and no nothing is manifesting. Show me how to trust when that heathen down the road is constantly getting blessed and I'm getting nothing. Show me how to trust when that idol worship is down the road, worshiping the devil and everything that Life is going good. Show me how to trust. When them jokers up in the church lying, when them jokers, oh my God, I didn't mean to go there. But we need it up in the church lying and having a perception like everything in their life is going good. Show me how to trust. You know, and this morning I finally got it. It's not in how, it's in who. And so much, we miss the how. I'm sorry, we miss the who. And I'm not trying to bring condemnation to nobody because condemnation is not of God. But we got to get to a place of a body. In. See, well, now when we look at trust in, now that I can trust in him, watch this. Going back to what the, what the psalmist said, uh-huh. Uh -huh. he, he, he is my Lord. He is my God. Watch this. He's not taking possession of who God is. He's not claiming who God is. He now has a relationship with God. He now has a connection with God. And while he's abiding, there's a flow that's coming from God to him. And he's realizing the one he's abiding with is the one he can trust in. Oh my God, oh my God. Because he's realized as he's abiding with him, he's found out there's nothing too hard for God. Oh my God, oh my He's found out that even though this is difficult for me, it's not difficult for him because I've been a body. I'm not going to take what I'm going through and put it in something that I have to do, but I'm going to take it in. You know why? Going back to what I said earlier, when we go in, everything can't go in with me. Oh, my God. Trust in. Oh, baby, you got to have faith. I'm not knocking that. I'm not knocking that. Please don't get that wrong. I'm not knocking that. That's true. We have to have faith. But don't just tell me that and walk away. Don't give me your church jargon. I need some help. 
I, I watch this. Watch this. You had no problem calling me a sinner. You had no problem calling me an outcast. You know, had no problem treating me the way you've been treating me. But now you want to come as holy as thou and tell me to have faith, to have trust. Show me how. Better yet, show me who. And that's where the abiding comes in place. That's where the church has missed it. We always been telling people how to do something. Oh my God, we ought to be telling. We always telling people why you should do something. We always want to control folk, but we never show them the who. People don't like it. People don't like it. People don't like it. People say, well, you should come to church anyway, baby. But watch this. People are tired of coming to a church where folk want to talk about them. People are tired of coming to the church where people say, mm, why are they here today? Uh -huh. People are tired of church folk passing them on the streets and not speaking to them. Maybe you haven't experienced it, but you just keep right on living. Maybe folk are just tired of the perception of the, of the form of God and they want God. Watch this. I want to tell somebody something on this morning. You might not like it, but that's okay. As a church, we got to get to a place of the abiding because when we abide, we show people God. When we abide, we become, we look like who God is. When we abide, we take on his image and his likeness. When we abide, we show God. When we abide, we show people how to walk in God. When we abide, we we show people how you can trust in God. When we abide, we can show people how God is who he says he is. I'm sorry about what you went through in the past. I'm sorry about your previous church experience. But I want to talk to you about God on today. I want to talk to you about getting to a secret place. I've learned over my life. You let them ass keep talking. You let them keep gossiping. You just dwell in the secret place of the most high. Stop worrying about what they say. They they have no power over you. You just abide. You get to the secret place. The secret place is a place where warriors dwell. The secret place is a place that cannot be penetrated by your enemies. The secret place is a place where people go to fight. Oh my God, my God, the secret place is a place where we go to get just a little more strength. The secret place is the place where we go to be reminded of who God is is and who we are in him. The secret place is where God protects us. It's a place where God protects his promises. I don't know if you've ever been there before, but God gave you a word of promise and it seems like with everything going on around you, the promise wasn't going to come to pass. But I want to tell somebody, in the abiding place is the place you go to be reminded that your promise is safe because he's keeping you safe. His word shall not fail, but it shall accomplish what he set it out to do. In dwelling, we're talking about dwelling in the secret place. Oh, my God, my God. It is a place that we can move and trust in. It is a place that we can reside in. Oh, my God. Dwelling in the secret place and abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. The place that is our refuge and our fortress. It's also a place of deliverance. It's a place of rescue. I don't know if you've ever been in a place before where you needed somebody to come rescue where you needed some help. Oh, my God, my God. But if you keep reading down in the psalm, the psalmist says, surely he shall deliver thee from the stare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. What are you talking about, Brian? The stare of the fowler is a trap. The enemy would have us trapped up in some stuff if he could. As a matter of fact, in this particular trap, the trap of a fowler. The fowler will hide its traps. Oh my God, the fowler will put the traps in places to where the birds couldn't see it. The fowler at times will change the methods of setting the traps. He uses the traps to draw us with things that bring pleasure to our flesh. But because we're in the secret place, God delivers us from the trap. 
in the secret place. The psalmist testifies that the Lord delivers us from the noisome pestilence. Can anybody see or hear any pestilence going on right now? We're in the midst of a plague and disease. But the Bible says we still can abide in the secret place. And we fast forward. The psalmist says like this. He said, because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high. Even in the midst of him in writing what he was writing, he had to go back and be reminded of what, what who God is. He had to be reminded of what he was shown in the abiding place. He was like, because thou hast made the Lord, you know something, he is my refuge. Uh -huh. He is the most high. And even in the midst of that, he says he's my habitation. He's the place that I live in. He's the place that I dwell. And then he said, you know something? No evil shall fall upon me. No any plague come my, nigh my dwelling. You know why? Because your dwelling is now God's house. See, when we read that text, we try to possess that dwelling as our place. But you got to go back to the um, verse number one. He that dwelleth in the secret place. The secret place is your new home. Your secret place is your new normal. The secret place is your habitation. Your secret place is your place of safety. Then the psalmist said the secret place is a place of angelic assistance because he says he will give his angels charge over you. He'll give his angels command over you to keep you in all your ways. There's angelic assistance all around you to defend you, to protect you, and to guard you. The secret place is a place of a authority. The psalmist says you will tread upon the lion and adder upon the, oh my God, upon the young lion and the dragon. Shall you trample under feet? Jesus picked it up in Luke 10, 19. He said, behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Oh my God, and, by, and nothing by so any means hurts you. Finally, the secret place is a place where the Lord speaks and establishes his promises. This is what was so intriguing to me. As you're reading down the psalm, it talks about God's protection. It talks about what God will do. It talks about the abiding place. But then all of a sudden, God speaks. Oh, my God. I don't know about you, but have you ever been in a place where you were so broken, where it seemed like you were so beaten up, and you were trying to hear God, but you couldn't get through, and he wouldn't speak? The psalmist said, in the secret place, when we get down in the text, we will find out that God speaks. In verse 14, the Lord says, uh, because you have set your love upon me, therefore will I deliver you. I'll set you on high because you have known my name. Let me back up again. He says, I will deliver you. Oh, there had to be some words of comfort. Have you ever been in the abiding place and God speaks to your situation? Not totally your situation now, but he said later on you go through. I will deliver you. Oh, my God, my God. Then he said, you shall call upon me and I will answer you. This is a dialogue of the abiding place. This is a dialogue of the secret place. He says, I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you. With long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. We're talking about the secret place. Oh, we got to get to the secret place. We got to start abiding. Oh, my God, my God. In life, man, in life, there are going to be things that we desire and that we need. They're only going to come by way of the secret place. They're only going to come by way of the supernatural. People look for things to come from this person or that person to come through the world and its system. We're waiting for solutions to come from those, watch this, that's not even connected to God. We're looking for answers from those that don't even have a relationship with God. We got to stop looking at those people and start a body. So I believe God wants to use his body. He wants to use the church, not a church. Watch this. Because before there was a church, we were the church. God wants to use the church.
to bring about the solutions. God wants to use the church to bring about the change. God wants to use the church for the church to say, he is my God. Stop looking at a body. We're looking at the government. We're looking at people with all these significant titles. We're looking at people that have wealth, that have money. Start abiding. God gave us dominion before he gave people money. Start abiding. Stop, stop elevating people to a place to where you think that, that, on, that, that what you need can only come from them. Start abiding. Stop allowing people to write your story. Start abiding. Stop, watch this. Stop allowing people to write your conclusion. Start abiding. I had put my stuff up this morning and I was rushing, getting ready. This came to me this morning. This thought came to me. What if the assembly, the ecclesia, what if the body of Christ just started abiding more? What if people would abide in the place of gossiping? What if the church would abide instead of being petty? What if the church would abide instead of stirring up trouble? What would happen if the church would abide instead of dwelling in nonsense? What if we would abide instead of trying to be in charge of everything and running everything. What if, what if, what if, just think about it, just ponder on it just for a moment. We got to move because I know y'all taking me my preaching time. I'm about, I'm about finished, I'm really finished. Yes, I know, I'm finished. What if we can come together and abide more? on the day of Pentecost. It says they were all on one accord. Watch this. It didn't say they agreed on everything. They were on one accord. They wanted God. They wanted what Jesus promised. Can we get to a place, okay, you can have your opinion about this and the other, but can we get to a place of commonality? That's my big word for today. Can we get to a place of commonality and say, we just want God. We want to abide in you, Lord. We want to walk in you, Lord. We want to dwell in the secret place, God. We just want you. The abiding place. The secret place is where we must start abiding. If we want victory, we got to get it through the secret place. Overcoming obstacles is done in the secret place. Battles and wars that we face, we have to go to the secret place of the Most High and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The secret place. I know that word secret may seem like it's so far away. It may seem like because of where you are or what you may have done or doing that it's not attainable for you. That's not true. He that dwelleth, you take the step and God will meet you there. You know why? Because he's already there. We just have to get there. We got to get to that abiding place. We offer so much time and so many other things. We got to get to the abiding place. I'm reminded of, we, as we say, the old church mothers. I'm reminded that they wouldn't always be praying for themselves. 
But if something was going on in their family, someone they, could, they were connected to in the church, community, whatever, they went to the abiding place. The church has got to get back to the abiding place. It's not about the Facebook likes, the Facebook views. It's not about how much height you're getting on social media. You take the height, give me God. So many things going on around us is in the abiding place. Can we get that together? It's not that far away. You may be saying, God, or you may be saying, Brian, I don't even know the Lord like that. I don't even know Jesus. I don't know nothing about him, the secret place abiding or none of that. That don't mean you can't get there. All you got to do is open your mouth. And confess that Jesus is Lord. Believe that God raised him from the dead. And the Bible says you're saved. That don't mean that everything's worked out, but you are saved. It's a start. It's the beginning of a relationship. Just start calling on him. Start seeking him. The Bible is there for us to read so we can know more about him. I found out even, I appreciate all the preaching and the teaching. I appreciate people telling me things, but, but sometimes for me, I gotta get here. I gotta get to, the, I gotta get to prayer so, so I can know him for myself, even in my experiences. You can do it, the secret place is not far away. We'll take time out of our day. We'll drive an hour, an hour and a half to get to our favorite restaurant sometime. But to a body. I ain't picking on nobody. <laughs> but we got to get to a body place. I put it like this. We'll, 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 go, we'll, we'll go to the extent for pleasure. And we sacrifice a body. Your turnaround is in your body. What you've been looking for is in your body. We're going to pray with you. We're going to pray with you Facebook. We're going to let you go. Those watching via Zoom, those that are here, hang on for a minute. If that was you that proclaimed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we want to pray with you. And for those out there, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, God, that you will continue to draw people with your loving kindness. Father, we pray, God, as you're knocking at our hearts, God, that we will open the door. Father, that man or that woman that's professed salvation, God, but they don't know, they don't know, they don't, they don't know how to navigate. They don't know how to get to the secret place. Lord, I ask you, God, that you would just wrap them up, God. I ask you to protect them, God, and cover them with the blood of Jesus. Lord, God, I ask you to minister to them, God. And, Father, I ask you to lead and guide them, God, in the abiding. Lord, I pray, God, that you will cause a disconnect in their lives from everything that's hindering them from the abiding, but that you will connect them with those that can lead them in the abiding. Father, we pray, God, for your supernatural protection upon your people. Father, we pray for healing, God. We pray for deliverance, God, for those that seem trapped, God, those that are missing or strongholds, God. We pray, God, for your deliverance in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we know that you're able, God. Father, we thank you, God, for each and every one that's viewing via, via Facebook, God, and those that are watching the replay. And Father, I just pray supernatural blessings upon them, God. Father, I pray, God, that you move in their lives in such a way, God, that they, can, they, that they will refuse to give up, God. They refuse to throw in the towel, God. Lord God, I just pray, God, that, that their eyes will be open, God. They will seek you more, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray your favor upon them, God. Lord God, some are going through, some are sick, God. I pray your healing upon their bodies. Some, God, are, are experiencing bereavement, God. Lord, I pray, God, that your peace would encompass them, God. Lord, I ask you comfort them, God, and give them strength, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you, God, to allow your light, God, to shine in the midst of their darkness. Father, we just give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you all. We ask you, please, again, um, share this broadcast. We thank you for supporting the Ladder House Ministries. We're praying for you. We want to let you know that we love you, and God bless you.